JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week February the 15th until February the 19th. I am Haral Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, there are no central bank meetings on this week's agenda, but uh, we do get the minutes uh, from the latest FOMC, RBA and ECB monetary policy gatherings, uh, from which we may get some extra clues with regards to those banks' future plans. As for the data, on Wednesday we get the UK and Canadian CPIs for January, while on Thursday Australia's employment report for the, for the same month is coming out. On Friday, we have the, pre the preliminary PMIs for February from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. But let's uh, take things from uh, the beginning. Today, during the Asian morning, we already got Japan's preliminary GDP for the fourth quarter, which uh, slowed by less than anticipated to 3% quarter over quarter from 5.3%. The forecast was for a slowdown to 2.3%. As for the rest of the day, markets in the US and Canada will stay closed due to the President's uh, Day and the Family Day, respectively, while in China, markets will stay closed for the whole week due to the celebrations uh, for the Lunar New Year. The only noteworthy release on today's agenda is Eurozone's industrial production for December, which is forecast to have uh, deteriorated 1% month over month after expanding 2.5% in uh, November. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian session, the RBA releases the minutes from its, from its latest monetary policy meeting, where officials decided to expand their QE program to buy additional, to buy additional uh, 100 billion ounces of uh, bonds. Though we don't expect this to be followed uh, by more easing in the next couple of months, we will scan the minutes to see whether our view is indeed correct or not. So if the minutes reveal that uh, RBA, RBA policymakers are not willing to ease further uh, their uh, QE program uh, to their monetary policy in the in the next uh, couple of months. This could be positive for the Aussie. However, if we do get hints that uh, there is uh, there is uh, the possibility for more action uh, following the latest one, then this could prove negative for the Aussie. But in general. As I will explain in, in a while, uh, I remain positive in the overall market sentiment. And given that the Aussie is a risk-linked currency, I still believe that it will continue trending higher, especially against safe havens like the yen and the Swiss franc. So even if we see the Aussie sliding somewhat, uh, I will treat that as a corrective move. I believe that uh, the Aussie has the potential to strengthen uh, further. Now, during the European trading of uh, Tuesday, we get the German ZW survey for February, the second estimate of Eurozone's GDP for the fourth quarter, as well as the bloc's uh, preliminary employment change for, uh, for the fourth quarter. With regards to the ZW survey, the current conditions index is expected to have declined to minus 67 from minus 66.4, while the, the economic sentiment index is forecast to have fallen to 59.5 from 61.8. The second estimate of Eurozone's GDP is anticipated to confirm its preliminary estimate of minus 0.7% quarter by quarter, while no forecast is available for the employment change. Now, later from the US, we have the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for February. Now, on Wednesday, the main item on the agenda may, on the agenda may be the minutes from the most recent FOMC gathering. 
at that uh, meeting, the committee decided to keep its monetary policy settings unchanged, with the only material change in the statement being the part saying that the pace of the recovery in economic activity and employment has moderated in recent months. While there was uh, some market chatter over QE tapering at the press conference following the decision, Fed Chair Powell clearly stated that it's too early to focus on tapering dates. We've heard from him last week as well, with the tone of his speech staying on the dovish side. He noted that the improvement in the labor market has stalled in recent months, and even if we do, even if we do see a strong uh, labor market soon, they will not tie the monetary policy solely in response to that. He affirmed that they will keep interest rates at current levels until the economy has reached uh, maximum employment and inflation stays above 2% uh, for some time. Now, with all that in mind, it will be interesting to search the minutes for clues as to whether other officials are on the same page uh, with their chief. And if so, the US dollar is likely to stay under selling interest. We saw the US currency falling last week while equities and other risk-linked assets may continue marching north on expectations that the Fed will do whatever it takes to support an economy severely hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Now, as for Wednesday's data, during the early European morning, we get the UK CPIs for January. Both the headline and core rates are expected to have ticked down to 0.5 and 1.3% year-over-year from 0.6 and 1.4% respectively. Although such prints will keep the door open for an increase in, uh, in e for an increase in the Bank of England's uh, QE purchases, if necessary, we don't expect them to hurt the pound much. At its latest gathering, the Bank of England pushed back the idea of negative interest rates, which, combined with the fact that the UK is going further ahead in the COVID vaccination race, encouraged uh, GBP traders to buy more of the British currency. In our view, the same catalysts are likely to continue supporting the pound and bearing in mind that we see market appetite staying supported in the foreseeable future, sterling may perform better against uh, the safe havens, yen and franc. I see the case for the pound to perform well against the US dollar as well, uh, which as I noted, uh, I believe that it may stay under selling interest. Later in the day, we get inflation data from Canada as well. The headline rate is expected to have ticked up to 0.8% year-over-year from 0.7%, while no forecast is available for the core rate. At its prior meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates and the pace of its QE purchases unchanged, disappointing those expecting a small cut or even a re-increase in a QE. Officials also noted that as the Governing Council gains confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of net purchases of uh, government, uh, of government of Canada bonds will be adjusted as required. In my opinion, this suggests that the next policy step for the Bank of Canada may be tapering its QE. However, the employment report for January disappointed, with the unemployment rate rising to 9.4% from 8.9%, and the net change in employment showing that the economy has lost 212.8 thousand jobs. So with that in mind, although a bit higher and inflation rate well below the Bank of Canada's inflation aim of 2%, is unlikely to suggest that, um, that the tapering may be on the cards uh, in the months to come. And this appointment could even push back expectations on that front, something that may prove negative for the Canadian dollar. That said, with oil prices climbing higher and the overall market sentiment staying supported, we believe that such a reaction will prove to be temporary. Eventually, the commodity-linked currency may recover its inflation-related losses and continue to trend north, at least against the safe havens. In the US, we have uh, the retail sales and industrial production data for January. Both headline and core uh, sales are expected to have rebounded 1% month over month after falling 0.7 and 1.4% respectively, while industrial production is forecast to have slowed to 0.4% month over month from 1.6%. Now on Thursday, 
Asian time, we get Australia's employment report for January. The unemployment rate is forecast to have slid to zero to excuse me to 6.5 percent from 6.6 percent, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has added another 40,000 jobs, a slowdown from the 50,000 in December. However, following the stellar gains in October and November, we see the case for slowing jobs growth as more than normal. Uh, imagine we got uh, more than a hundred uh, uh, than a hundred thousand uh, jobs uh, gained in October and uh, and November. So it's more than normal to have a slowdown in the next couple of months. And so we uh, we don't expect this to raise speculation for more easing by the RBA in the months to come, especially. Uh, given that the bank has already expanded its QE purchases at its uh, latest gathering. Now, later in the day, during the EU session, we have the minutes from the ECB monetary policy meeting. Now, despite the lockdown measures around the Eurozone, President Lagarde said that uh, the downside risks to the economic outlook are now less pronounced, making, making investors skeptical over further easing by the ECB Although the bank repeated once again that it stands ready to adjust all its, its instruments as appropriate. Therefore, we will scan the minutes to see whether Langard's view is, is shared among other officials as well, and whether indeed the chances for more easing have lessened uh, for now. If we do get such uh, hints, something like that may benefit uh, somewhat uh, the euro. The U.S. building permits and housing starts for January are also coming out, and they are both expected to have declined somewhat from their December uh, readings. Now, finally, on Friday, investors may lock their gaze on the preliminary PMIs for February from several Eurozone nations, the Eurozone as a whole, the U.K. and the U.S. The Eurozone manufacturing PMI is forecast to have declined fractionally to 54.4 from, from 54.8, but the services one is anticipated to have risen to 46 from 45.4. Uh, this is likely to drive the composite index slightly higher, but keep it within the contractionary territory. Specifically, the block's composite index is forecast to have inched up to 48 from 47.8. In our view, this is unlikely to change expectations around the ECB's, uh, the ECB's future uh, course of action, especially if the minutes uh, if the minutes uh, released on Thursday point to a sidelined governing council for the next uh, couple of uh, months, there are no forecasts for the UK for the UK prints. While in the US, both um, both the manufacturing and services PMIs are expected to have declined somewhat. The manufacturing index is forecast to have fallen to 58.5 from 59.2. The services one to 57.5 from 58.3. Now, as for the rest of Friday's data, during the Asian morning, Japan's national CPIs for January are coming out. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is anticipated to have increased to, zero, to minus 0.7% year over year from minus 1%. Later in the day, we have the UK and Canadian retail sales for January and December, respectively. Both the headline and core UK sales are expected to have declined 1.6 and 1.8 percent month over month, after rising 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 percent, uh, respectively. While in Canada, the headline rate is anticipated to have fallen to minus 2.6 percent from 1.3 percent. The core rate is forecast to have fallen as well to 0.3% from 2.1%. The U.S. existing home sales for January are also due to be released and expectations are for a slight decline. So uh, that's it uh, from me. Uh, in generalizing, I believe that, uh, and summarizing, I believe that uh, the broader market sentiment will stay supported. Risk-linked currencies like the Aussie, the Kiwi, and the Canadian dollar, which is a commodity-linked currency related to oil prices, are likely to continue uh, marching uh, north, especially against the safe havens, which I expect to stay under selling interest. So those are the yen and uh, sometimes the Swiss franc. Uh, I believe that the US dollar will stay under pressure as well. Uh, the pound may continue strengthening. The Brexit uh, saga is now on the sidelines. 
We don't have any updates on that. It took the back seat. Uh, the Bank of England pushed back uh, the case for negative interest rates. So uh, this is unlikely. This is less likely to happen now. And those are catalysts that could benefit the uh, could uh, benefit uh, the pound. And yeah, basically, uh, this is uh, my uh, current view. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice uh, day. JFT just fair and direct.